Some of you guys might be like, well, I don't want to learn this stuff. Here's the deal. I'm not asking you to write code, but I'm asking you to dive in and learn these three things. Hey there, I'm Dan Martell, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you how to manage a SaaS, a technical product as a non-technical founder. Maybe you're worried that you're gonna spend all your time and energy building something that doesn't even work, that just falls down on the weight of the usage, it's super buggy, and you don't have enough technical knowledge to feel comfortable building a software product. And maybe you've done the leap already and you're in it and you're worried that the wheels are gonna fly off, or you're about to make the decision, but you're scared that you won't find the talent or you won't know how to manage them or somebody's gonna run away with your idea and steal your code. All those things are true. I'm gonna share with you today is the four specific strategies that if you implement will make this 10 times easier uh, to allow you to move forward without worrying about those challenges. Let's get into it. So be sure to stay at the end because I'm gonna tell you how to get access to my Idea to Exit mini course where I talk about how to prototype, pre-sell, and hire your dev team if you're just getting going. But more importantly, I wanna tell you why I feel qualified to share these ideas with you. So first off, I taught myself how to code as a 17 year old. I didn't go to university, I'm self-taught. I thought, like many people, some of you guys have gone through coding boot camps, that for me to be successful in SaaS and technology, I need to learn how to code. And I went year after year writing code, writing code, probably wrote code for five years until I realized I'm not the best at this. When you meet a 10X programmer, you meet somebody that absolutely loves code, and maybe that's you, it just certainly wasn't me. I was more of a ideas guy, I like to talk to customers, I wanna figure out where the opportunity is, maybe sell a little bit, do some marketing. And even though I've hired 200 engineers across all my companies, I just hired three last week, I've coached over 700 plus non-technical SaaS founders to lead successfully and grow their SaaS companies. And many of them, I've helped them avoid the pitfalls, which I'm gonna share with you today. These are the four strategies that are gonna allow you as a non-technical founder to play the game at the highest level in a world of technical people. So let's get into it. Number one, how to find talent. So here's the deal. Most people ask me like, Dan, I've got this crazy good idea. I wanna hire a programmer. Where do I find somebody that can build this for me? Here's the reality. You could look at the college, you could find your buddy, you can ask your friends, all those stuff. The truth is, is for 90% of the founders out there, I'm talking about like products like Basecamp, Jason Free, you guys probably know that. To many others out there, products you use, I know they're early origin stories and many of them found developers in other parts of the world. The reason why, if you search on Google, uh, cheap developers or inexpensive developers in other parts of the world, you will find the countries today, I want you to Google it, I'm not gonna tell you what they are, but you can probably guess. There are certain countries that right now, even though the world is going through this like increase in salaries, if you haven't noticed that, literally all my, my recruiting uh, friends, they're seeing 20, 30, 40% increases in salary expectations across all roles. And you're seeing this even in certain countries that used to have really competitive, you know, inexpensive engineering talent are going up. Some of them have doubled in the last four months. So, so what I would recommend is to do the Google search to find the countries today that have those people. Literally, there's countries where you can hire a developer for $2,000 a month, full time talking 160 hours a month, they're available for $1,200 a month, $1,500 a month. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It shifts all the time. And it doesn't take away from the concern of being able to manage this person, qualify them, et cetera, which I'm gonna talk about. But I need you to first understand that most early stage development needs to be kept on the lower cost level because there's a good chance that what you build initially isn't exactly what you need to build and you need to give yourself more time and resources to eventually get there. Number two is managing the technical talent. So what I've seen over the years and many of my coaching clients is 
where they have sometimes a technical co-founder, at least a technical partner that's built a lot of the code for them. And the challenge is they run into a day where they feel like they be, they're being held hostage, right? The person wants a raise, they want more equity, the partner wants to double their rates, and the founder's like, how do I, how do I deal with this? Well, I'm gonna give you the three specific tactical and technical things that you need to do. And some of you guys might be like, well, I don't wanna learn this stuff. Here's the deal, I'm not asking you to write code, but I'm asking you to dive in and learn these three things, okay? It's just like if you open up a restaurant. I'm not asking you to become a chef, but I am asking you to be responsible for your kitchen, meaning you need to understand product and food costs and refrigeration and safety standards and all those things. So the three areas is one is source code management. In your business, if you can't find out where your code is being managed and stored at, you gotta fix that, okay? So most people are using Git or GitHub. Um, you can use whatever source code management tool. You just gotta ask your technical person hey, what code repository are we using for the source code management? And give your get yourself admin access, okay? So that's number one, is source code management. Number two is what's called the CICD pipeline, okay? It's an acronym. It stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment of Your Code. It's a fancy word to explain the way multiple developers write code, it merges together and then you push it to staging or production. Or even you could build your own local development environment. But the CI CD pipeline, which is something you can Google and there's diagrams on it that can show you how to do this, will give you certainty that at least multiple people working on the code are doing it in an efficient way. So if you want to avoid your code to be super buggy or that it's not being built right because you can't really build a CI CD server if you're not deploying in real time. And you wanna be deploying every day, ideally every week. So you can ask your developer, hey, how often are we deploying our code base to staging or production? If it's only every two weeks per sprint, that's not a good way to do it. You wanna build the code base so that it can continuously integrate, continuously deploy. See why it's called CI CD? And, and force them to go down that route. And they might say, oh, that's too much. We don't need to do that. Don't listen to them, okay? Send them this video. Hey, if you're saying that to the, the founder, stop saying that, it's not true, okay? You know what you gotta do? Deploy it, check it out. There's a bunch of great technologies, I'm not gonna get into it, um, but you know, Jenkins is a good one if you wanna look into that one. And then the third thing is agile development. So agile development is the process of coming up with customer uh, features and stories and, and then building that for the engineering team, creating the stories for the engineering team. Most people, have the developers write the code and then the product becomes developer design. And, and that is a very bad strategy for doing it. So you wanna make sure that you use Agile. So if you don't know what Agile is, buy a book, read the book, go through the process, become an Agile person, build an Agile team, okay? But those are the three things. If you said, I'm not technical and I wanna survive in building my SaaS product, what do I need to know? I'm saying source code management, CI CD pipeline, and then Agile development. You do those things, you will literally save yourself all the pain that most of my clients that come to me after they almost lose their code base or almost get kept hostage or you know, have to go through a big rewrite because their code is spaghetti code because they didn't have any process. It's a scary thing. So that that's the area you need to focus on. Number three, verify talent. So look, if you've never hired a technical person, you don't even know what good code looks like. They might do a test project, show you the code, and you're like, man, this looks good. Here's my strategy, okay? It's what I do even with my portfolio companies at High Speed Ventures, is I hire a technical advisor. Adv advisor. I have a technical advisor. I'm, I'm technical enough, but I just don't have the time to do it. So what I do is I hire somebody that is very talented in development, maybe works, for, well, very likely works for somebody else that I can't really hire, but I admire their knowledge, okay? So you can hire people on Upwork, you can find those people in your local city, but you just wanna find somebody that's like really smart at the code and the infrastructure and the architecture to, on a weekly basis, one hour a week, come in, look at the code, look at the infrastructure, talk to the team, and then report back to you. Literally, they act as your kind of like, Rosetta Stone of understanding what's going on. So they might see something go, hey Dan, I just want you to know it's really weird the fact that all of the logins for the database is hard coded in the front end code. And you're like, whoa, that's that, yeah, that sounds weird. How would you do that? They should put it in a configuration file that should be locked down and only available to X, Y, and Z person. Okay, 
Have you given that feedback to the team? Yeah. All right. So I just want you to know that you need to work with them to make sure that gets changed in the next sprint. Perfect. Thank you very much. That kind of advice, you know, you can get it from a coach. You can hire a technical CTO coach. Uh, my friend Etienne de Bruyne has a program called Seven CTOs. You can check him out. Um, there are people out there, coach, mentor, but an advisor, a technical advisor, hour a week, that's to me how we verify the talent to make sure that not only do we hire the right person and they can also be involved in recruiting to do final interviews, but they also monitor things and they're just part of the ongoing sanity check. It's no different than hiring somebody to do secret shopper at your retail store or your restaurant to come in, order a meal, do an assessment, give you the report and you take that and talk to your manager and say, hey, this is what I heard from our secret shopper. That's the same idea. Number four is protect yourself. So here's the, the challenge is as a technical per, a non-technical person trying to build a technical product, there's just realities to this. So one, you need to get insurance. Errors and emission insurance, make sure you have that. Um, there are bug bounty services that you can pay to kind of essentially like hack your code to find vulnerabilities. But the big idea for protecting yourself is forcing your team to document the architecture, to outline how the code works. Most um, non-technical founders don't even know to ask for this, right? Or to put all the logins into a shared login system like a 1Password or a LastPass. Um, but that to me is the fourth step, which is if you can get documentation around how the diagramming of the software works, if you can get some errors in emission insurance and you can get some bug bounty programs set up, that's, that's an 80-20. Like you will literally protect yourself from just low hanging fruit vulnerability and attacks that other people should find out to help you, um, you know, protect the asset you invested. Just like, again, if you owned a restaurant, you would probably buy some insurance for that restaurant. Same thing. You need to protect yourself from your technical team. But those are the big four ideas. So quick recap, number one, find talent in other countries. Number two, manage that talent by looking at the source code, the CIDC pipeline, the agile development process. Verify that talent by hiring an advisor. And four, protect yourself, insurance, bug bounties, and um, architectural diagrams. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I wanna share with you an exclusive resource called the Idea to Exit mini course. It was a program I created to help non-technical founders come up with the right idea, prototype that idea, sell it to the market before you write, you, you write a check to build it, and then use that pre-sale to go and hire a developer to build it. You wanna click the link to get access to that. That is my gift to you. So click the link below to get access to the idea to exit mini course. That's my gift for you. And if you like this episode, be sure to leave a comment and let me know what is the number one takeaway? What's the one thing you hadn't heard before leave a comment below let me know subscribe to my channel be sure to smash the like button so other people can find the video because that's how the algorithms work and as per usual i want to challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business and i'll see you next monday